Hello friends, welcome back to Digitalk. In this session, I am going to explain you about a very important topic of WebLogic Server, which is called session replication. Okay, so we have a different kind of a session replication in, in WebLogic, like in-memory session replication, JDBS, uh, JDBC-based session replication, coherence web-based session replication. Okay, so first I will give you an overview of what exactly is session replication. Okay, and what is session failure? And then I will show the step-by-step -step configurations of in-memory JDBC and coherence web-based sessions in next few videos. So in this video, I will explain you about the session uh, failure and and uh, and the basic concepts of in-memory JDBC and coherence web. And then with step-by-step -step configuration, I will show you how you can configure the session replication for in-memory. Okay, so let us understand what is failure and session data. Okay, so if you have gone through uh, my previous lectures with uh, with respect to WebLogic on the architecture of WebLogic, where I have explained uh, how the request is get uh, executed when a user hit any website which is deployed on your WebLogic server. Okay, and maybe if you are not aware about that one. Okay, so what happened is that if some user access the any of the website, okay, or any of the application which is deployed in your WebLogic server. Okay, so in the back end, you have a multi, maybe you have a multiple applications are running for the high availability and the, uh, and the user request come maybe come from the web browser and then from web browser it get connected to any of the managed server. Okay, for example, in, in the screen, you can see there are two instances of WebLogic server running in the behind uh, WLS1 and WLS2. If, if a user will try to access any application, okay, so the, the user will get connected with either WLS1 or either with WLS2. Okay, and again, based on on certain kind of a load balancer configurations. Okay, till a user is uh, working on that particular session, it, the session will be connected with that only managed server. Okay, for example, a user access the website or application in our case. Okay, and the user session is connected with the backend managed server WLS one. Okay, and whenever that user is connected to the backend any of the managed server or support in WLS in our case, in our case, okay, and so there would be some session data of that particular user. Okay, so what does it mean session data? Uh, let us take example of the some e-commerce website. Okay, so whenever we do the online shopping, we connected with the uh, e-commerce website and then we order a lot of uh, shopping items in our shopping cart. Okay, which may purchase in few next few minutes, or maybe we take uh, add it in shopping cart, and then we which we can uh, buy anytime. Okay, right in the same day or may next day or any time. Anytime. Okay, it will be there in the session session uh, cart. Okay, so that means when a user is uh, connected to a uh, to an e-commerce website, and then maybe he's adding some items in his shopping cart. So whatever the items he has selected and added in the shopping cart, that will be stored in the session data. Okay, because that is uh, related with a particular user. Okay, and suppose that a user, as I said, is connected to backend managed server WLS one, and he or she may be doing uh, some e-shopping, added some uh, items in the shopping carts and navigation to different screens and items in in the website. Okay, at that time, your backend server get crash due to any reason. Okay, so if the session is if your if your managed servers get crash okay the first thing that will come to our mind is that if that server is get crash the user will get replicated to another server right so application the the browser will not crash the the browser in the application of user will not get crashed the user will be redirect to the another managed server in the cluster right that is called the feature of a high availability and called as a failure as well like if your uh, session is connected to any of the managed server if that get crash your session will get replicated to some another server that is called a concept of high availability and failure right but what will happen with the session data because user was connected to the managed server one okay wls1 in our case and all the session data was there in the managed server one right so session is fine so if only user session will get connected to the other managed server, then again, the user will be redirected to the front main login screen. Okay, because that is again going to be initiated new session, right? So what is the technology? What is the way so that user can replicate to another managed server along with the session data? Okay, so that user cannot feel that the, uh, the backend application server get crashed. Okay, so for that, we enable the session replication. What happened in that case? If a user is connected to any of the backend server and he or she might be doing some uh, something on the website, he has some data in his session. Okay, so if that server get crashed, then the session will get transferred to some other managed server in the cluster, but along with the session data. 
So that means if I given the example of shopping cart, so that means all the items he or she has added in his shopping cart, okay, will still be there in his shopping cart. Other, otherwise, if we will not replicate the session data, then the new session on the other managed server, uh, when connected, your shopping cart will get empty because the session data has not been replicated, right? So this is called a session replication. And now how we can enable this session replication in a web application? Okay, so for that we have a different ways and when we talk about the web logic, we have three ways as I said, in memory, JDBC base and coherence web, which I'm going to explain in the new facts few slides, right? So when we, um, we talk about the configuring session persistence, so you use session persistent to permanently store data from an HTTP session object to enable failover and load balancing across a cluster of web logic servers, right? So there would be a cookie based session. So because when we connect to an particular application, right? So your data would be in the your cookies as well. Okay. But to handle the failure kind of a situation, we store that session data permanently somewhere in our system. Okay. So that in case your server get crashed, we take that data and along with the session of the data should replicate to another server. Okay. So the different kind of a session persistence that implementation that are supported memory. Okay. The second is file system. Third is JDBC persistence. Fourth is cookie base, and the fifth one is in memory replication, which is using either WebLogic server cluster or coherence cluster. Okay. So when we talk about the memory, okay, this is a single server application that will not be replicated. Okay. So I'm not going to explain about that one because that is rarely used or hardly used. Okay. In clean implementation, file system means your data will be stored somewhere in the file system. When we talk about the JDBC, that means your session data will be stored in the JDBC, some database. Cookie base, that means your data will be stored in the cookies and in memory replication where your data will be get stored in the memory. That means your session data will be get stored in the runtime memory of your server. Okay. And when we specifically talk about the state, rep, uh, state replication in, in case of web logic. Okay. So there are three methods provided for the uh, session replication. One is the in memory replication. Okay. So in memory, that means your session data will be stored in the memory of your server. All the sessions that are connected to your uh, web application, okay, the, the related session data will be stored in the memory. Second is your JDBC. That means if you have enabled the JDBC based persistence, uh, JDBC replication, okay, so in that case, all the session data will be get stored in the database. Okay. And when we talk about coherence web, then it is a separate kind of a technology, or you can say a separate enhancement or, or, or a separate plugin, which is stored, installed with your uh, WebLogic server. Okay. Which is stored your session data in the coherence web instead of the memory. Right. So because sometimes it has happened that uh, there are uh, sessions which need a large amount of memory. That means the, the data which is expecting in a user session could be very high. So in that case, if you will store the session data in your server memory, then your server can get crash or may can start hanging. Okay, because it will it may not able to cater the demand of the sessions in the uh, server memory. For that, you can uh, opt for the option which is called coherence web, which will store your session data externally. It will not store in the in memory. So there, we have three ways. And in our next three uh, videos or lectures, I will show you all three one by one. But in this particular session, I will tell you how to configure the in memory replication with a demo. Okay, so let us see, uh, see this example. Okay. So I have two managed servers running in my domain. Okay, so what I will do, I will deploy my application on the cluster. That means to on both managed servers. And then I will try to access a demo application, okay, which is a shopping cart application. I will try to add some items in my shopping cart and then we will see the how the session replication works. Okay, and now the first thing that uh, what you need to configure is the replication groups. Okay, so as I said, I have two managed servers in, in a cluster in my domain. Okay, so now to configure the replication groups, you have to go to your admin console, click on servers, and then uh, and then click on your particular managed server. So in my case, I have clicked on the managed server MS1, and after that, click on the configurations and cluster tab. Inside that, define a name for your replication group and preferred secondary replication group. Okay, so I have given the replication group name as demo wrap group one and for preferred secondary, I have given demo wrap group two. So what will happen is that it will define the replication group for managed server one with the name of demo replication group one. Okay, and the preferred secondary group, uh, the name that is I have given demo replication group two, this name I am going to assign to my second managed server, right? So that means the replication group name for the first server will be defined in the preferred secondary group of my managed server 2 and the managed server 2 replication group name will be defined as the preferred secondary group for the managed server 
one. So this is I have defined in managed server one. And now again, go back to your click on your second managed server MS2 in my case. Again, go to configuration cluster. And now you have reversed that. Okay. Now the replication group name I have given is demo replication group two, which I have given as a preferred secondary group in my managed server one. And in managed server two, I have given the preferred secondary group name as demo replication group one, which is the replication group name of managed server one so that they can understand like if the uh, session uh, if the managed server one get crashed it should replicate the session to managed server two and if man in case managed server do get two get crash it should replicate the data to managed server one similarly if you have multiple managed servers you can define the replication group accordingly okay so now we have defined the replication group after that you have to update your uh, var file okay and what exactly you need to in the var file uh, there is a specific structure of your var file which contain your, all the code okay so inside your var file if you will extract it or if you will uh, unzip it on your maybe on you know, a windows or linux machine then you will see a folder inside that with the name of web hyphen inf inside that there is a description descriptor file for web servers or you can say for the web applications which is web.xml and weblogic.xml so what you need to do is edit the weblogic.xml file okay and add the session persistent uh, descriptor as I am showing on the screen with the value replicated if cluster. Okay, you can see that I have defined persistent store type as replicated if cluster. So once you will add this particular session descriptor, which is showing the replicated if cluster, that means this will enable the in memory session replication for your web application. This is all you need, you need to do in your in your web application. Okay, after that you can save your file and then again you can make it in a var format with the help of jar utility right so this is only the change that we have done in our var file where we have updated our weblogic.xml file and added the persistent store type replicated if cluster right this is the parameter that i was talking about okay so now i'm going to test my configuration is completed i have defined the replication group and i have updated my application with the value now testing okay so what i am going to do in testing is i will access my application which i have deployed on my weblogic server okay on the cluster then i will add few items in my shopping cart okay and then i will check the server logs to like to which server my session is connected okay and the server to which my session is connected after that i will kill that server okay so once i will kill that server i will again view and then go to my application and then i will see if the if the uh, the items that i have added in my shopping cart is, is still reflecting or not okay because the backend server manager server i have uh, uh, brought down okay so and after that i will try to add few more items in my shopping cart and i will see that if it is working or not and if it is displaying all the items which i have added uh, initially and then which i have added after killing the server so that will show me show us that the, that session replication is working perfectly so this is my demo application with the name of shopping cart okay then if you need this application you can write to me on digitalk.fmw at gmail.com i'm repeating again digitalk.fmw at the red gmail.com i will send you this particular demo application okay access this application click on go shopping okay after that you can add few items in your shopping cart so i have added three items which is highlighted in red okay and once added you click on the view shopping cart and when you, once you will click on the view shopping cart that then you will see that three items are added in your shopping carts so as of now all three items are in your memory of your server right because you have three items so all these three items are in the memory of the server of the backend servers to which, which it is connected okay now to how to check like to which managed server this session is connected go to your managed server log files Okay, so I have two managed servers. So I have, I have checked my managed server one and managed server two log files. In my case, uh, my session was connected to managed server two. Okay, and I have added few items in my shopping cart. So you particular to this application, you will see this kind of a logs in your particular managed server log file. So now what is clear to me is my session is connected to managed server two, right? So what I will do, I will kill the managed server two from the admin console, right? because my session was connected to managed server 2, which I have verified in my log file. So I have shut down my managed server 2. Now, again, go back to your web session, which was connected and click on view shopping cart and you will see that all the items are still there. If you will not enable the session replication, what will happen is that once you will click on view shopping cart, you will not able to see the items that you have added in your shopping cart because your session was corrupted when the backend managed servers got down. Okay, and this is visible only because we have enabled the session replication. Okay, now again, go back to shopping, add few more items in your shopping cart. Okay, and 
check the manage server log files to which now the session is get connected and again go because manage server 2 last the previous session was connected to manage, manage server 2 and i have killed that server now it is only manage server 1 so you will once you will see in the manage server 1 then you will see that new items are also added in your log files along with the previous content so this is the complete concept of session replication how it works what is the difference between different kind of session replications how we can configure the session replication specifically in in memory okay and if uh, you want to configure your session for uh, the different ways like you want to configure it for coherence web and you want to configure it for your uh, jdbc base okay so that i will going to post in my next sessions okay and till then stay tuned for the next video